Hi, so um, I think I mentioned in a few previous videos, I've been on a bit of a wrestling roll of it. Um, just a quick recap, uh, in sort of the late 90s, when I was 12, 13 years old, um, I started getting into it along with my brother and um, my sister to some extent as well. We, we were all into it, we, we grew up with it. Um, and, you know, I really followed that attitude era. Um, then, sort of around the early 2000s, I kind of drifted off because the whole kayfabe thing and the whole world of wrestling just seemed childish to me at that time. Um, you know, and I knew, I actually knew less about the industry than I do now, uh, although I'd grown up with, uh, you know, I'd, I'd grown up with people like... Um, the Rock, of course, uh, Stone Cold Steve Austin, Kurt Angle, The Hardy Boys, Edge and Christian, uh, The Undertaker, Kane, Goldberg, too many to name. But, you know, all those big names of the Attitude Era. And um, that was a big part of my childhood. But then I, and early teenage years, but then I sort of drifted off it around by about the mid 2000s, I would say. Um, and then for a long hiatus, I'd say roughly from the mid 2000s, to the late 2010s, I just had little interest and I was much more focused on boxing. I still have an interest in boxing, but that's where it shifted. Um, then about maybe two or three years ago, I started getting back into it again. No particular reason, I just curious. I started looking at it, thinking, well, who, who are the big names nowadays? And uh, then I started to see, you know, um, Roman Reigns and Braun Strowman, Dean Ambrose. Um, Seth Rollins, AJ Styles, or all the all the guys that would be perhaps more associated with this era, uh, and you know that there's many others, of course, but basically, um, yeah, I've got back into wrestling. Um, it's uh, the WWE, of course, is a huge organization, and it has revenue perhaps in the billions in terms of uh, live shows, in terms of merchandise, and the, the whole world of wrestling. It's larger than life. Um, it's the most famous, but there's other promotions as well. I was watching a video, um, it wasn't a Vice video, but it was on the world of extreme death matches, which makes WWE look very tame. Uh, and this was a fight between Schlack and Nick Gage. Now, if you follow that world, you probably know who those guys are. Um, extreme doesn't sum it up. I mean, these guys were murdering each other, you know. Um, like all wrestling, it's choreographed, but. Um, it's pretty extreme. Uh, I left a few questions there to see if any insider could maybe answer them. Um, my questions were, number one, why are children allowed to watch? I know it's the children in the audience. Number two, um, they can't have anywhere near the sort of salaries that WWE stars have. So what's the motivation? I would like to think that it is because they want to do it, not because they need the money, because this stuff is brutal. Um, now, the glass may be that, sugar glass which is slightly less dangerous but the cuts are real um and if you see it you know there's a few videos floating around youtube um it is pretty extreme anyway um in my last video i spoke a little bit more about just my interest in wrestling how i got back into it and my respect for what these people do uh but this one i want to be a little bit more specific and i want to talk about me the dark side of wrestling now, several channels I would recommend that um, cover all sorts of wrestling trivia, top 10 lists and so on. Uh, WrestleLamy is a good one. Uh, what Culture, um, or Cultaholic actually. Um, I'm sure I'll miss something here, but uh, WrestleLamy is good. Um, traffic. Yeah, uh, so there's several documentaries out there. Behind the Titanron, Titantron, I can never say that word. Um, is a good one, and Dark Side of the Ring, which was a uh, broadcast series, but there's snippets of it on, on YouTube. Behind, behind the Titantron, which is the giant screen, is something I, I'd recommend. Now, long-time wrestling fans, there are well-known incidents that are heavily documented in the sport. Uh, the Chris Benoit murder-suicide incident is, you know, possibly the most notorious of all. Um, the Von Erich curse, uh, if you don't know, they were a Texas wrestling family and three of the four sons committed suicide. 
so it's easy to see where that curse came from. Um, the, the idea of a curse, very tragic history in that family. Um, a case that I think has echoes of the Benoit case, although it's less known, Jimmy Snooker and Nancy Argentino. Uh, Jimmy Snooker was a popular wrestler in the 80s and his, um, uh, I don't know if she was his girlfriend or wife, but this was featured on a Behind the Titan Tron episode, um, died in unclear circumstance with a head injury. Now, Snooker had um, a reputation for domestic violence. And the strange thing about that was he was cleared. He was then arrested in, um, I believe, 2018. It was actually my birthday, the 1st of September. Uh, but he couldn't be tried because he had dementia at that point. Now, the strange thing is he's honoured in the Hall of Fame, yet Benoit's not. Um, but it, it's, you know, it's strange. Benoit, as far as I know, there were never claims of domestic violence um, until what happened, whereas with Jimmy Snooker there was. So I don't know. Um, behind all these cases, there's always, I think because wrestlers are larger than life figures, it attracts conspiracy theories and it attracts a lot of, um, you know, what ifs or what what is that situation. Um, the murder of Bruiser Brody is another one. Um, the murder of Dino Bravo, yet another. Um, I mean, it goes on and on. There are so many things that have gone on behind the scenes in the world of wrestling that it's it's pretty shocking. Um, and, and it's kind of a contradiction because WWE particularly, which I'm going to focus most on because I'm most familiar with it, um, it's larger than life, you know, it's, it's world wrestling entertainment and that entertainment is a huge focus of it. Um, you know, these are flashy characters, they're larger than life, the storylines are outrageous, the kayfabe is outrageous, it, it's like a circus. I don't think that's disrespectful to say that, it's it's just a show on a huge scale. Um, but then the, the other side is behind all the lights and behind all the bits and behind uh, the fun, um, there is a dark side to this world. Um, and I'm going to quote here from a Wikipedia article, and it is quite shocking to read. List of premature profes professional wrestling deaths. Now, there's not an equivalent list for boxers or NFL players or other sports. Maybe there should be, but there isn't, as far as I know, at least not on Wikipedia. And this is what the article says. I'll just read out the first few paragraphs. According to a 2014 study by Eastern Michigan University examining professional wrestlers who were active between 1985 and 2011, mortality rates for professional wrestlers are up to 2.9 times greater than the rate for men in the wider United States population. So that's a three times higher. A 2014 report by John Moriarty of the University of Manchester and Benjamin Morris of 538 um, also found that the mortality rate for professional wrestlers is higher than that of athletes in other sports. Experts suggest that a combination of the physical nature of the business, no off-season, um, like they're constantly on the road, and the drug culture of the 70s and 80s and the early 90s contribute to the high mortality among wrestlers. Another study ascribed a high death rate largely to cardiovascular disease, with morbidly obese wrestlers being especially at risk. Um, for the purposes of this list, wrestlers listed are those who died before the age of 65. Many promotions employ performers as independent contractors and do not offer company-sponsored group health insurance coverage in most instances. This is said to have a causal connection their longevity, morbidity, and mortality. WWE performer status as, in, as independent contractors was spotlighted by John Oliver on an episode of his last week tonight with John Oliver in March 2019, with Oliver calling on WWE fans to protest at WrestleMania 35. WWE denied his critique. Now, the list is extensive. There is easily 100 names there, all under the age of 65. And if you look at the causes of death, I'm just going to read out a few. Um, I mean, it, it's extensive. It really is extensive. This isn't all WWE, I have to stress. It's across the board. And it is over quite a long period of time. It's not just in the modern era. Um, but 
here we go. Uh, Reed Flair, 25 years old, drug overdose. Um, Casey Bailey, 27 years old, intracranial aneurysm. Um, Chris Taylor, uh, 29 years old, cardiomyopathy. Um, Plum Marico, 29 years old, head injury and match. Um, Mount Kidd, 29 years old, drug overdose. Um, uh, and there's many where this came from. Uh, Ed Gantzner, 31, suicide by shotgun. Um, Adam Farstorm, 32, suicide. Crash Holly, 32, suicide by drug overdose and alcohol poisoning. Um, Larry Sweeney, 30, suicide by hanging. Um, I mean, it goes on and on. Uh, these aren't all suicides. A lot of these are... Um, medicinal problems now some of them are issues that may not be connected to wrestling dj peterson 33 uh, died in a motorcycle accident um adrian adonis 34 died in a car crack car wreck but the number of cases here which are medically related um or suicide is shocking but by whatever way you look at it um and I've deliberately cited names there that aren't well known, but there's some much better known names there. Eddie Guerrero is one. Um, Test is another. So clearly the world of wrestling has a problem. Now, to be fair to WWE, I think they probably have taken some efforts to change the culture. I know they've got a wellness program. Um, and probably, I would say, the lifestyle of wrestlers today is probably better than it was in the 80s because back then drugs culture was endemic i'm not saying that it isn't today but i think in, in show business it was endemic back then um in a way that perhaps is a bit more stringent today um so hopefully the, the big names of today will have long and full lives um but but it's very sad to see this um you know, sometimes I, I remember guys from the Attitude Era and then I think, um, you know, I'll, I'll say this wrestler has died and I look at the real name and then I look and I think that, yeah, whoa, that's that wrestler from that era. Um, I recognise, of course, her kayfabe name um, and it's shocking. So clearly there's a problem now. As for the causes, I think it's a controversial topic in itself. The issue of steroids is very controversial, and there's heated debate among wrestlers themselves over to what extent this is a problem. Um, clearly, if you overdo anything, it's going to be problematic. Um, but issues like roid rage are controversial. Um, you know, there's debate out on that. Um, I, I think Personally, one area that should be overlooked is mental health. I mean, certainly the physical side of it. These these people take enormous, you know, they're athletes. They take enormous risks every time they go in the ring. In boxing, it's different. It's The risks are obvious, brain damage. Um, not so much, you know, legs, uh, arms, that sort of thing. With boxing, it's quite specific. Um, and, you know, boxers have died in the ring, but the rate of death is still lower than wrestlers. With wrestlers, you know, the physical punishment they put their body through, certainly in death matches, certainly uh, uh, in that whole hardcore world, but even in WWE, I mean, any number of moves that are sanctioned are dangerous. And that's why these people are so professional and why that in of itself warrants such respect, because it takes years of discipline. It takes extreme coordination with one another. Um, not that that always happens, but... When you look at what's involved on the physical side, that in itself warrants enormous respect. Then when you add to that uh, the fact that they're constantly on the road, um, you know, it's physically grueling in terms of the hours that they put in, um, and then the politics of it. I mean, you can get a young prospect, uh, a young jobber, and he or she has a physique, they're a good wrestler, they have all of that. Um, but, you know, because they don't fit into a particular kayfabe, uh, or maybe they, they don't quite work out as a heel or as a babyface, um, for those who don't know the terms, a heel is a villain, a babyface is the good guy, you know, they can end up being screwed over by the background politics of what's going on. 
So I think there's an enormous, it's almost like actors being cast in a role. You know, actors sometimes complain that they're constantly typecast. I think it's the same for wrestlers. That with wrestlers, they have the physical side as well. Um, and I think that would be very hard if you know that you've got skill and you know you, that you're good, but you're held back by locker room politics or managerial politics that's going on there. I think that side of it, what I've learned from behind the Titantron, um, it's it's shocking. Um, one episode was the curtain call incident of I think it was nineteen ninety six, when basically um, one of the wrestling stables they later became D Generation X and I'm trying to remember what they were called at that time. Uh, it eludes me right now, but it had names like Triple H, X Pac, um, Diesel, people like that. Um, you know, it was a big wrestling stable now. Uh, Triple H ended up, Shawn Michaels was there too, Triple H ended up being severely reprimanded because um, he kind of was the one that initiated it. Basically, these guys were all friends. Two of them were going to go over to WCW and they broke kayfabe, which is almost sacrilegious in the world of wrestling. Um, so that's an example of the sort of um, expectations there are on wrestlers, the number of rules there are. But part of that episode, this is behind the Titan Tron, was those guys are basically locker room bullies. They pushed their way around. Uh, apparently, for example, they gave Chris Candido a hard time um, and other wrestlers. Uh, the sort of BS that goes on behind the scenes. Um, it's almost like, you know, in the military, you hear about hazing. Um, it sounds pretty much like that. And it's, it's BS. I don't see why people who already have all the physical demands and all the pressures that wrestlers face, uh, why they need to add to that pressure by that sort of behaviour. Um, I think that side of it needs to be, you know, that's got nothing to do with kayfabe or storylines, which is the whole wrestling world, the whole kayfabe. It's all about show and it's about larger than life personalities and some of it's outrageous. Some of it's in bad taste. But, you know, in terms of behind the scenes, obviously when you get a large group of people, some of them won't like each other. That happens in life. But, you know, I've always taken the view of hazing or bullying that it's just not cool. There's no, there's no context that justifies it. If it's about breaking the new guys or seeing if they're tough enough, um, again, you know, do it one-on-one. -on -one. Um, that's my attitude. Uh, so, you know, it's unfortunate that that sort of thing goes on. And I think WWE needs to look at stuff like that. I'm not suggesting, incidentally, that that's causal. But, you know, bullying has led to suicide in the military. Why would it be any different in the world of wrestling? If a prospect feels that they're, they're constantly facing barriers and they're getting locker room hate for no reason, um... Things like that, you know, need to be looked at. Mental health. Um, I haven't looked at the wellness program in detail. I know it focuses a lot on the drugs issue, but mental health is something we hear a lot about these days. Well, the whole world of wrestling, again, I keep stressing kayfabe, kayfabe. This whole world of outrageous storylines and so on. Um, I think anyone wanting to get into the world of wrestling cannot be an introvert. You know, they know that those storylines are outrageous and it's all, that's all for the cameras, that's for the audience. Then behind the scenes, if they're dealing with pressures, uh, this thing about them being independent contractors, maybe WWE in particular, as the biggest promotion, has more of an ethical responsibility to basically look after their employees. Now, I do believe that people are responsible for their own actions. If people are going to abuse their body with drugs, ultimately they're responsible, but I also think, you know, they're, they're putting their lives and limbs on the line every time they go into the ring. So WWE owes them in that sense to have some sort of approach of making sure that not just, you know, they're taking the professional restraints in terms of the physical demands, but also the mental health side of it. And I think if there's a wrestler who is, you know, exhibiting serious depression, Maybe they're having relationship issues outside the ring, etc. Um, I think WWE needs to offer them support. I don't accept that 
oh, it just comes with the territory, therefore it's just inevitable that wrestlers will die young. I think there's a lot more that can be done to prevent that happening. I think there will always be risks because it is a physical sport. There will always be risks. I don't. I think it's impossible to prevent that. But at the very least, you can have a situation where the mental health situation improves, where we don't see so many wrestlers dying by suicide. I mean, that's um, that is shocking. Anyway, uh, I don't mean to put a big damper on all of this. By the way, I still can totally see the the entertainment value of wrestling. I see the appeal. I mean, hell, I watch it all the time. I'm a big wrestling fan. Or at least, uh, I'm not an expert wrestling fan. I'll rephrase that. I am a, I'm a keen observer. Okay? I can't say I'm a huge fan because I don't know all the storylines and all. You know, I'm not such an insider that I could go for the encyclopedia in that sense. But I'm, I'd say my knowledge is reasonable. I've, I'm learning and learning. These channels are great. Behind the Titan, Trump, um, WrestleMania, they're, they're, you know, they're great education sources for anyone that wants to know the whole world of wrestling so i strongly recommend them maybe i'll put a link on this video anyway uh let me know your thoughts if if you're a long time wrestling fan what what's your views on this i've made a similar video by the way about boxing but what's your views on this fact that so many wrestlers die young is it just inevitable or is there something in it i mean is there something that can be done i think that the physical side of things i mean you can only change that to an extent because in the end of the day, it's entertainment. And if you take away too much of the physicality, it's boring, right? Um, but in terms of the mental health side of things and in terms of maybe problems that wrestlers are having outside the ring, I think a lot more can be done. And I personally think there should be a zero tolerance approach to, I mean, WWE has been very keen on diversity and all that recently, which is good, but maybe they need to focus more on locker room bullying. Because a, there is a thin line between payfade and just being an asshole uh, to the new guy. Let me know your thoughts.